Welcome everybody to another episode of Photographer's Favorites. Today is going to be a fun, different show for you. Um, so this is the show where I pick five of my favorite photos and my guest picks five of their favorite photos of other photographers and we talk about everything we love about them. Today we're going to mix it up a little bit. Today I have two guests with me and I didn't pick any of the photos. So I have Patty and Susan with me. Welcome ladies. Hi Ray. Hi, Ray. How's it going? So just to let everybody know, uh, Patty and Susan are two of my mentorship students. I've been working with both of them for a while. Uh, so I'm really excited to have them on. They're really good friends, amazing photographers, and uh, a lot of fun to hang out with too. So I know this is going to be a, a fun show. I'm guessing there's going to be some laughter involved with this one. So I hope you all enjoy it as well. Um, we're going to start with introducing Patty. Patty Constance, uh, a great photographer. Uh, Patty, how long have you been shooting wildlife? Um, I guess about five years now, really seriously. Nice. You know, yeah. And then really more so since I started working with you. Okay. You know, That's good. You That's really good. have made a difference in that. Um, Patty, where I'm, are you based out of? I'm out of Tom's River, New Jersey. I actually moved recently from Central Jersey because okay. I like to shore birds. So I just moved. There you go. To <laughs> just put yourself right there. Nice. That's it. Right in the middle. Excellent. What's uh, what's some good photography you've been up to lately? Uh, really, you know, it's kind of tough in the winter. So yeah. I've really been doing a lot of backyard birds. Um, and i trying to get some shorter day off. Not really um, doing good with that. Um, and winter ducks. Um, nice. Some so I just haven't. Um, I'll, I'll be posting those soon. I have some really nice ones that we worked on. So um, Excellent. But now I'm, sh I'm waiting for the shore birds to come in. There you go. They won't be long. Um, is yeah. this uh, one of the backyard shots? This is a backyard shot. Yes. Nice. Yeah, I love it. Now yeah. I'm sitting in, in, in my blind uh, in the middle of the snowstorm. And, nice. Uh, I just sat there and waited for them. My little there you chicken. go. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. Perfect. Well, hey, thanks for joining. This is going to be fun. All That's right. So Next up, we have uh, Susan Geiswhite. How's it going? Going great. I just got Excellent. to New Jersey. Nice. It's yeah. Yes. Yes. There we go. <laughs> Excellent. Uh, well, I want to hear all about your plans at the end of the show. Uh, but okay. for now, uh, Susan, uh, where are you from? What have you been up to lately? I am from Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Nice. And um, what I've been up to is backyard birds. Nice. Um, with the winter and recovering from surgery and COVID. I dove into the backyard birds so much that I got bored of them. And then I started playing around and getting more creative. So yeah, this is a great example of that right here. One of my favorites from you this past season. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. You both did outstanding stuff with the backyard stuff. And I liked how both of you uh, pushed beyond the standard shot, you know, uh, at, which is, I know something we, we talked about a lot and, and worked on this season. So um, yeah, uh, really good stuff. So, all right, you two, are you ready to get into the show? I'm ready. Yep. Are you All ready? right. Excellent. Uh, probably not, but I'll try. To <laughs> <laughs> All right. So uh, we're going to kick it off again. We're going to run things a little bit differently. Instead of the back and forth thing, we're just going to each, each uh, one of us is going to give their thoughts on the photo first, and then we'll kind of uh, go on to the next photo and somebody else will. So I'm going to kick it off with one here. Who chose this photo, by the way? I did. Okay. Nice. Excellent. So um, got this beautiful silhouette from Nick. Uh, all, I say this a lot on some certain photos that stand out. This is such a graphic photo. Uh, it, it's all about shapes and uh, just bold, bold contrast here. I mean, this is a true black and white. And I don't mean a grayscale photo. This is like there's almost no other values in this photo other than black and white. Um, I mean, if I, if I really dig in, like maybe there's some gray tones here. But, uh, you know, usually a, a photo kind of converted from a color photo into a, a grayscale photo or, you know, take all the color out. You get some soft tones and in, in between and everything. But um, Nick chose to process this one with some heavy contrast. And I think this is one of those few times where it really works for me. Uh, sometimes I see high key images that are just kind of pushed to the max like this. And I don't think they work. They kind of looked pushed to the max to me. Uh, but this one, it fits flawlessly, I think. And because of the graphic nature of this, it's all about the shapes. And it's so cool how these three, I'm going to go Great Egrets, reading the caption, yes, Great Egrets. Um, 
it's it's so cool to me how each one of these birds has a different pose it almost looks like a, a sequence of birds like you know maybe took three shots and then kind of stitched them together kind of thing i can tell that's not the case just because of how the water is disturbed going through each bird there and stuff like that but um uh, it's just such a neat thing that each one has its own unique pose and then we almost have a, a we pretty much do have a perfect looking out of the frame, looking out of the frame, almost dead on head centered frame there. Um, it's, it's also interesting how it's funny. The reflection differs slightly from the actual bird's heads in their shape, uh, height sequence, I should say. So um, we have kind of a, a lower, a little bit higher and then back down lower, but down here, it's almost like a diagonal line, like straight across. Like this one almost feels higher than I think it is than that one. Uh, so it's kind of interesting to me how that worked out with the reflection being different there. And then the last thing I really noticed about this that I love is uh, the reflections. Um, if we just kind of look at these reflections, it almost looks like a, listen, I'm not an artist, so I don't know the different styles, but I would say just like a pencil drawing or something like that, uh, like a sketched kind of thing or etched maybe, I don't know. Uh, but it very much has like an artwork vibe to the, the reflection, the edges of them. Uh, which is just a, a really neat, cool kind of abstraction of these very, you know, clean and bold uh, lines that we have on the birds themselves. So next we're going to pass it off to Patty. What do you think, Patty? Anything to add? I think that when I see this, I think it's movement, you know, it's not mm. static. You can see there's movement in this photo and it's not, yeah. you know, at first, yeah, you think, oh, it could be one bird, you know, but it's, it's, I really just like it. I, I like it because it's, it shows the movement and birds not just standing there you know, they are, they're all, they're all going to go in different directions. That's why I'm waiting. For yeah. You know, what's yeah. Happen. Great or point. Is, gonna, or is the middle one going to jump up? I yeah. like the high contrast. I really like that. I really do. I, yeah. I like everything about the photo. Excellent. Susan. Yeah. Um, so when I picked this photo, I, I thought because of the high key stuff I've been doing, it caught my eye. Yeah. Uh, plus it's also a great photo. Um, and so I could see myself in a situation where I should try something like this. Nice. Um, those egrets will fish together sometimes. Mm -hmm. So they will um, stir stir the fish up and get gather yeah, them stir fry. in the yep. area yep. Where, they, where they eat them. Was yeah. that? I said, yeah, stir fry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, um, so I, I'm wondering if that it kind of looks like that might be something that they're doing totally. there. Yeah. And yeah. So it's a great capture of behavior. Yeah. Plus, I just I love when they move. I think they're so beautiful and graceful. And they also remind me of models on a runway, like with the wind blowing and their their wardrobe is blowing yeah. behind them. You know. <laughs> That's <Okay. laughs> Yes. Yep. They, I, I love it when they when they walk like that. It, okay. It's just like I'm, I can so, see it now. I'm just so beautiful. <laughs> so it's it's funny to me that I think this is a species that can both look incredibly elegant, just like you described, especially when they're doing like a slow stalk, like a single bird going through the shallows, right? You definitely get that vibe. But then this shows a little bit of the other side too. They can look totally awkward, you know, like this bird's body is facing to the left, his head is yeah. facing to the right, he's all twisted up wing out you know uh so they they can have an awkward side to them as well this one's got a little bit more of the elegant pose this one has a little bit more of the elegant pose uh, so i think it's neat to see both sides of this th that that feature in the species in one shot there's a uh, place in york that has a rookery of these guys and when they mate um they do this beautiful dance it's almost yep. like a ballet mm -hmm. up in the sky yeah, it's, I've seen yeah. some beautiful photos of them. Yeah, that is such a cool thing. Yeah. All right, you ready to go on to the next photo? Yes. All right, Patty, you're up on this one. Okay, Thoughts okay. on this one? Vocalicious. <laughs> yeah. Yes. You know, <laughs> like first off, I love Emily's stuff, but um, this one I just was like, oh my god, look at that boca. You know, yeah. It, 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 yeah. Uh, I love the reflection. And I, I could put myself there. I can hear the birds waking up in the morning or maybe this was after sunset, but I can hear it. I can picture myself there. And then sometimes I, that's how I look at a photo. It's like, oh, that's, I, I, I'm there. I'm, yep. it, you put me right there where yep. I need to be. Mm -hmm. And that, that, like I said, they had, she had me at Volca. 
Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that common saying you hear all the time. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. And then only photographers would understand. I know. Totally. I know. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And they all exactly would. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because really, I mean, it's it's a it's a white ibis, um, and it's not like it's a beautiful bird, um, but it's beautiful here. Yeah. You know, it's 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 beautiful. It's feeding in this beautiful light, uh, and she captured it well. I I just really I have nothing but great things to say about this. That's what Excellent. I really love about it. Susan, any other thoughts? Well, without the bokeh, it would be right. just another standard yeah. image. Right, right. You know, and a good image, but yeah. yeah. A yeah. solid image, a right. solid yep. portrait. Yeah. Right. Um, so when I, when I see this image, I immediately know who took it. I mean, she yeah. has a signature that is just mm -hmm. fantastic. I wish I could think of something like that, where she just, when you see her photos, you know right. who took them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah no, it's I, great to have that when you get to achieve that you you, you hone in and, and develop a particular style and it becomes recognizable and uh, Emily certainly has done that. Yes, yeah. And she I like how she edited like she could have gone more bold with it. The whole totally. Thing, but yeah. it she chose to keep it um, soft, ha hazy looking mm -hmm. and then which makes low the contrast yeah. stand out even more. It does. I, I, she made yeah. it more of the boca and not as much. I mean, the bird is there, but it's really about the boca. I, uh, it, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I think I Patty think likes the boca. Yeah. I think so. okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, definitely. I agree with you. Um, yeah. I think uh, it's funny in the previous episode, um, which I you know, came out last week, but I just recorded a little bit ago. Uh, we had a photo that we talked about the same concept where I think the Boca actually was the star of the show and the mm -hmm. subject became a little bit secondary. Um, for me, this one doesn't do that quite as much, but it does like that Boca is just as important an element of this photo as the bird itself. Um, and each, each element of this, because to me, there's two elements of this photo. There's the bird, and then there is that that beautiful, sparkling, glittering bokeh. And so they're the two main elements of this photo. And each one of them stands out and is beautifully done in their own right. So you take you, you take the bird out of this. Imagine this sh photo without the bird. It's still a really cool, abstract graphic scene, right? Uh, you yes. take the bokeh out of this. It's still a beautiful, calm morning, beautiful reflection, nice, soft light photo of this white ibis. And uh, yeah, I agree with you, Patty. You know, um, I do think this bird can be beautiful, uh, but the juveniles, probably not the best stage of life for right. them. You know, um, they, they, I think the adult, uh, the adult males in breeding plumage, when they get the beet red bills and the brilliant right. blue, blue eyes. eyes. Um, yeah. yeah, that's, that's a sh very striking bird, but this juvenile, maybe not the best. So having this additional um, accent of the beautiful glittering uh, sun on the water there, I think is a nice way to fancy this bird up a little bit. Yeah, the, um, the if I could say one more thing, the, the no. book a nice <laughs> gold. Yeah, yes. Say something else. Nice warm <laughs> gold color and then everything else is, is yeah. cool. Cooler tone. Yeah, yep. Beautifully. Yeah. So, yeah, I like yep. how yeah. she make it. Yeah, it is. It It's not overpowering to the point of where it takes away from the rest of the photo either it adds to it. I agree. Mm -hmm. Yep. All right. Next photo. Susan, you're up first. Oh, I picked this one. Did you really? Yes, I That's did. That's a nice one. All right. Um, so let us know why. Um. Okay. So this is a species that I was so hoping I would get to photograph this year. Mm. I saw them uh, once in uh, Minnesota. Um, but with the uh, reports of the eruption year, which actually happened, it just didn't happen in my area, my yeah. area, my yard. Um, <laughs> uh, I, so I was really excited to see this. Now I've seen other people post photos, but I thought this one was really unique and it kind of tells a story. To me, the bird looks really tired. Mm -hmm. Like I feel, I imagine this bird has flown from... <laughs> Far north from up north, Canada, yes. Down, down to the states. He's tired, and thank goodness this farmer decided to leave up the sunflower heads this year, yeah. and he was able to 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 rest and eat the sunflower. <laughs> <laughs> and then you know the contrast between this this sad dead sunflower that still has seed, yep. but, and then this pretty 
just such a pretty little bird. Yeah. So white and bright and and of course the background is nice and it's yeah, very pleasing. I, I really like that the seeds are below the bird. I like how he put the put that at the bo- this the seed head at the bottom. Yeah. In the corner. Yeah, yeah, I very much agree with you. The uh, the tonality of this shot really helps yeah. to make it. Mm-hmm. Um, there you go. The yeah. And you have texture the, also. Texture. Totally, yeah. Yep. Yeah. You know, yeah. It's like simple texture. And, and then you have, you know, the, what is it, ge- geometric of uh, shapes of the seeds going yes. down. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, it's the color, it's the background. It's, I mean, I love your story about so tired and it's <laughs> <laughs> cool. And it's great when a photo can do that for you. you yeah, know? yeah, you know, yeah. I mean, um, but you can, you know, it, it is, it's just, a, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful photo. Again, I yeah. like the textures. I like the colors, you know, I like the tone of it. It's, it's a great point that you brought up there, Suze, um, Patty, I'm sorry, of, uh, the, uh, the subtle lines that exist here that from mm-hmm. the seed head there that are still subtle leading lines. So it's like pulling us right up into mm-hmm. the bird there out of that corner, you know, uh, even the outside shape of it does that. Uh, this line kind of leading us down there and then the bird kind of projects yet another line that just kind of like you know kind of completes us out into the background there so um, you know those and they're not bold and strong lines there but they're there they exist and they all kind of just uh, fit together balance well together and I very much agree those those blue and gray tones just scream winter right off the bat they scream cold uh the the soft overcast light so it's not like this this warm beautiful golden light it's a it's a real soft uh almost dim overcast light right because it's not processed too bright and too airy um so it almost has kind of a a a darker feel to it that gives more of an emphasis of you know being almost oppressive kind of color uh and uh, a struggle that this bird has to deal with in in the winter you know Um, and then those bright reds and yellow the bill just pop right out of that so this is, I, I do. I just love the tones. I just love it. Excellent. All right, let's move on to the next one. There we go. Nice. Uh, Patty, you picked this one, right? I did. Excellent. Yeah, another one from uh, from our good friend, Jamin. Um, yeah, gorgeous, gorgeous scene. Just massive bull moose. Uh, looks like it's just resting in the grass there. I mean, uh, another absolutely great example of a beautiful scene that even without the animal is just beautiful to begin with. It's like, wow, just imagine standing there on that mountains with that view out there. I can just picture it. You know, I think I probably was on these mountains at some point with Jamin this past year. Um, (laughs) Yeah, exactly. I was just out of camera. No. Um, And um, you know, it's just, you can just imagine yourself being there. It's just all inspiring to see that to begin with. And then bonus, you add some amazing wildlife into it, uh, placed in there perfectly, compositionally perfect. Um, and then it's so funny. I, I just love this little stick over here, like these little clump of branches just, just fit in that space there. And I don't know why it almost emulates the same, the, the -hmm. antlers kind of, uh, sticking up and just poking into the sky there. It's almost like, you know, a mini moose trying to (laughs) like, uh, appear in the (laughs) shot over there, you know? Um, and just, it doesn't compare to the massive moose right there with these, uh, with that huge rack that he's got there. Um, I I think the moose saw that twig and said oh there's a spot i can hide. Yeah, totally yeah yeah let me just blend right in here yeah, you can't see me like right behind that, that, that little yeah, yeah yeah oh that's so funny uh patty anything to add on this photo well, you know when i saw this the first thing i thought is imagine yourself you're hiking okay and, you, and you're hoping to see moose but then you're taken by this beautiful mountains okay and then you come upon this <laughs> and you come up on the hill okay? yeah. and it's like, there he is. And you're yeah. in awe, not only of the moose, but you're in awe of the backdrop, you know? Yep. But I, I just love this, how he captured it. You know, he could include everything in this photo. Um, I don't, first off, I don't know how you can, when you see something that beautiful, that big and something that could actually kill you. Um, yeah how you can actually focus on it. I, I myself would need a defibrillator. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, you shot with me when I saw loons for the first time, so you know how I get. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Yeah, but imagine me with a, a moose in front of me. I would I, I would have a cardiac arrest. Yeah. 
Well, I guess it's different when you live with him all the time, you know. I guess, I guess. Yep. But I mean, look how he captured it. I mean, he captured it. Yeah. Is it, and it is laying down. I think so, yeah. You know, so imagine stumbling upon this. I'm sure he's shooting what, uh, he's shooting with a 500 or 600. Uh, this oh. looks, I would guess this is in probably a 70 to 200 lens. Um, oh, I don't yeah, think okay. there's probably no way he shot this with a long telephoto. That's what I really like about it too. Yeah. It's, you know, I mean, a little bit, so it's not that. a, it's not a wide, wide, but it's a but wider it, focal length for wildlife. And that's what really helps show off the habitat. I mean, definitely. He, he captured everything. It's, it's not only, I mean, you could, it could be a portrait if you, if you cropped it, but it, yeah. it's environmental, you know, oh, totally. it's showing everything about this moose, not yeah. just the moose, you know? Yep. Definitely. Anything to add, Susan? Well, I was wondering if he came upon this scene or if he saw the vista and he waited for something to come. What do you oh think? yeah i don't know i would guess probably saw the moose and went for it but i don't really know for sure you know yeah definitely that would be interesting to know yeah. yeah i think they're a little bit more from my understanding when talking to them i think they are a little bit more proactive in you know finding them and, and actively seeking out the moose themselves and then just kind of work the scene around it but uh, especially if it's resting there like that um yeah. I would doubt the moose would walk up and then lay down right next to where he was already set up. Right. But but yeah. who knows, you know, uh, crazy yeah. things yeah. can happen. Yeah. Uh, and so, I really like the last thing I wanted to add, sorry, is no, the, no, um, no. the, uh, the fact that he's really low in there to kind of make you feel like you're laying right next to him, the little blur of foreground here, mm -hmm. you know, instead of just standing up and, and looking at this moose or even being up on your knees kind of thing, uh, that foreground blur makes it feel like you're just kind of laying there right next to this massive animal. And it doesn't care. It's just resting, relaxing right there. I mean, it, it's, it yeah. looks really super chill. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Maybe, you know, is it breeding season? I don't, I, I don't know what, well, I, have I don't like know when he took this one, so I yeah, I would. Big, he, I mean, for him to be so mellow and just hanging out, you know, when yeah. there's somebody, because they have a sense of 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 their surroundings, you know. Sure. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. And then bonus for the bullwinkle hashtag. <laughs> oh <my> God, I... <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jamie gets bonus points on that one. <laughs> oh my God. But it's not uh, it's just a cool photo. It's it is. It's just. It really is. Mm -hmm. yep. so we expect something like that when we go to a lab yes there you go yep. back to yeah yeah uh, i'm on it just so you know so when we were in new hampshire <laughs> <laughs> shooting warblers in the yard and there was reports of a bear i said to you <laughs> i said to her now if a bear comes out of them woods don't move don't say anything. Don't, don't scream. scream don't I'm run away. <laughs> We're taking the photo. Yeah. <laughs> I'll beat you with my camera. Yeah. <laughs> so the same thing goes with boots. There you go. There you go. <laughs> that sounds good. <laughs> yeah. Can you tell? You know. <laughs> All right, ladies, I'm going to move the, move the show along here. Oh, all right. All right. Uh, who's, who's up? Who gave their thoughts? I think I, I gave my first. thoughts on that one, right? You so it's your turn, Patty. It's my. Th I thought I already gave my shot. My thoughts on that so, last photo. Yeah. Or did, oh, okay. Oh, no, then you're it, up, it, Susan. It my, it, okay, it is mine. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> Whatever. You know what? Yep. Are you okay? Go for it, Patty. Okay. Uh, well, okay. Uh, now uh, this has got to be taken in Benazette. I don't know. It um, says Pennsylvania, so that's a good uh, yeah, good chance. So, yeah. it, so Susan and I have both shot at Benisset together on nice rainy foggy mornings and um it, it, first off you know how hard it is to focus in the fog yeah because <laughs> uh, the first time I tried to focus I was like oh my auto focus isn't working um that's because I had a manual focus but um, yeah I love the mood that fog gives mm. you know so you know this is early in the morning and you can tell the soft foreground that they're in the right on the meadow. At the, yep. That's what I feel like this was taken behind the store. Mm -hmm. And that the just like, you know, we were waiting in those tall grasses sitting there yeah. and it was so foggy. We didn't know what was in front of us. And there were moose or moose, moose. elk, <laughs> elk yeah. right there. Yeah, they were playing in front of us right we're, there. Yeah. Wow. That shot of handlebars that I got in the rain. Yeah. That was, I was sitting very low 
and Susan was sitting to the left of me and I'm going, they were playing, the other ones were playing to the left. I'm like, I'm wrapped around my tripod. There's no way when they come charging over us, I'm going to get away from this, this, you know, I'm going to be yeah. dead. Yeah. But yeah. I, we can put ourselves in this spot. It's exactly. We know right. exactly it's where it. they are. And yeah. that dense fog that really just adds to the photo, you know, it just adds that, um, where you are, you have that sense of, uh, it's moody. Yeah, totally. Yeah, that's the perfect description for it. Yep, it's all about mood. Definitely. You put yourself there, and and, you know, it's the soft, uh, the soft foreground, so you you know he's in the grass or she's in the grass. Well, that's why I picked this one, Mm -hmm. if that's okay, Ray. If I'm sorry. (laughs) Totally (laughs) fine. We're all out of order. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) I don't, I don't care about sequence. Let's just talk about how great this shot is. We'll be great. We'll be great. We'll be right back with you. Yeah. Yep. Talk amongst yourselves. What I loved about this shot was I was like, damn, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> we did. We didn't put that foreground in front Wait, of us. Yes, we did. I didn't. I know. Yes, <laughs> I mean. you did. Well, you were sitting to the left of me. That's why. To the left of me? You were. You were sitting to the left of the grass. All right. We don't need to get that detailed <laughs> into your story. Come on back to the show here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. hey, just one quick thing. Yeah. We're, we're up there for, for elk. <laughs> we're sitting there early in the morning and the, the elk are right in front of us. Beautiful fog, rain. And she hears a pile of woodpecker. And she goes, is that a woodpecker? I mean, yeah. like, like, get, like, that's what's me. up. Yeah. I, high five, Susan. Right there with you. Oh, yeah. my cool God. birds. 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 Yeah. Birds. Yeah. Birds behavior. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, totally. so anyway, I, I did. I picked this because I didn't think to shoot through the goldenrod like he did, and that's just. I, if I ever go back, which I don't know, uh, it would be fantastic to do that. Yeah. So uh, the things that stood out to me are all the stuff you guys mentioned. It, great mood, and you know, if you've ever been to the area, it certainly will transport you there. If you've never been to the area, uh, it can still transports you to that open field, that calmness, you know, it's quiet. Whenever there's fog, you're not going to have a lot of wind or that kind of sounds rustling of anything, right? It's just, everything's kind of damp. Uh, so sounds are muted even more. So there's just that sense of peace, quiet, calm. Um, I've never been out there during the ruts, but you can imagine the sound of bugling echoing around, uh, the valley there, you know, yeah, it's gotta be incredible. And then, uh, just such a great profiled pose on this. Uh, this elk is really nice. You know, I just love how you know, just the, the shape of the elk comes up and then the antlers curve back. It just gives such a nice kind of pointed um, shape to the animal itself. And, you know, it's kind of placed a little bit on the right side of the frame. So we got a little bit more space over there. Just a nice soft vignette to the photo. Uh, just kind of really just draws our eye right in there. Uh, just very well done image of the fog, you know. And it's not over contrasted to the point of where we can't barely tell that it's that foggy it's you can definitely it's obvious that it's fog but we can still see the subject clearly so all those things work out very nicely on this image for me yeah you're absolutely right about that head turn yeah oh yeah it wouldn't it wouldn't be as good without that yeah it's a perfect profile yeah yeah. it's those antlers it's just you know even if um you did you couldn't see the neck like the the hair and stuff the shaggy neck yeah if you couldn't see that, but you could, that's a definite, you know what it is. You have those, that, the antlers, the angles. It's like, mm-hmm. it's, a, it's an elk and it's early morning fog. It's just mm-hmm. beautiful. I like it. Absolutely. No doubt. Yeah. All right. Susan, what do you think? Oh boy. Is that freaking cute? <laughs> 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 All right. Well, Patty already gave us, Patty gave us her feedback. That's it. It's just summed up in one sentence. Isn't that freaking cute? There you go. <laughs> It looks uh, like a little angry bird. I know. Yeah. <laughs> From the yeah. So yeah. fluffy. Yeah. yeah. It's like a pissed off chickadee. So what is it? A, it's a bush it or a bush? Bush tit? Bush tit. Yeah, bush tit. Um, that? I mean, just so fluffy. And because it looks like it's raining or it's snowing, yeah, it's snowing or yeah. something, his feathers are wet, which gives it a nice, the feathers a nice shaggy look yeah he mm-hmm. looks like he went to the salon yeah yeah, yeah. got a blowout yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. 
But um, I don't know how I know that term, but yeah, I know. Somehow right. I do. <laughs> well, yeah. Yep, Ray. There are a cute little bird. Where was this taken? Colorado. Colorado. Um, and it's the perfect background for it. So the red in the background with the red on the uh, branch. Yep. Beautiful. Yeah. It's I... it's just yeah. Yeah, it's and a great snow tie-in. Is yeah. No, very really. It just works all together. The bird, that like everything. Yeah. It's like um, yeah. it was color coordinated. It is. Color tones are great. Um, it's an in-your-face portrait, which is nice. So when you have an in-your-face portrait and not a lot else going on in the shot, um, you know, because and, and for good reason, right? It's a clean image, clean background, no distractions back there. Uh, we do have the bonus of that snow or rain uh, kind of adding a little bit of uh, pattern and, and, you know, kind of hanging bokeh back there. Uh, and then the, the sweet diagonal of the perch. It's not just a, a flat boring across perch. But uh, my point being, when we have that kind of in your face, just clean shot, not a lot of elements to the photo, um, a really simplistic shot mm -hmm. and it's close. I think it's really important to have some kind of personality, some kind of character in your subject, you know, and this just has that, you know, by a lot. Um, there's just so much character that fluffed out poof ball of a bird right there it does it just makes you smile when you first see it um you can imagine obviously it's cold so it's trying to stay warm capturing that air in the feathers there uh, so again a story starts to evolve uh, just from that cute puffy nature of that photo uh, or of this bird i should say and uh yeah it's just it's a nice i mean just one of those shots where you're like oh that's adorable you know it just gives you that smile yeah. that happy feeling when you see it which is a great thing she has a, a series of these. So every time I see them, I'm like, oh my God. I, you know, There's another cutie. Yep. Yeah, there's another. And it's like, like you said, it's personality, you know? Yes. And, um, and the fact that, you know, there's more to it. Like, it, I think if there wasn't any like snow, rain in it, I think that just kind of adds to it, you Agreed. know? But it's just, it, it, that freaking bird has personality. Yes. It really does. It's, it's just so stinking cute. It certainly does. All right. Yeah. Uh, let's, let's move right along. Oh, nice scenic shot. Ooh. Color palette in this is amazing. Uh, just some really, those deep red leaves in the foreground. Uh, such a great sense of autumn here. And, uh, you know, I love that the bird is in the shade. Little kiss of sun happening in the background there that we're starting to see. Uh, that's really nice. Nice use of uh, being ground level there. And, you know, just not cropping in on this bird, you know. Um, just giving it a sense of space, giving it a sense of place. And uh, all of those things work so nicely there. And uh, that hit the deck uh, being right on the ground level perspective just gives us great subject isolation in the background. Uh, this is a bird that is incredibly good at blending into its habitat. So, you know, even if you're up on your knees shooting down on this bird, all the texture of these leaves and the ground, it's just going to, he's going to like disappear right into it. There's, he's not going to stand out. Meanwhile, this bird takes up uh, what 5%, 10% at most of the mm -hmm. pixels in this image and yet still jumps right out at us. You know, it's the first thing you see is that lovely little was hermit thrush. Yeah. Hermit thrush um, kind of bouncing in there. Oh, that's cool. He saw his first hermit thrush, uh, which is really neat. Uh, so this is a great, you know, first time experience and photograph of this uh, lovely ground dwelling species. They're, they're such a cool bird. Yeah, I like it. I, Either one of you add anything. Yeah, I think Monet when I saw it and, and like Susan and I both said, it, it's like, you know, it, it, it's a painting, impression. but yeah. the first thing, you know, my eye is drawn to the bird, yep. but it's also everything else around the bird, you know, I, I, that I love. I love, I love where the bird's placed. Um, and he yeah. does stand out, but it's the, you know, it's because they are on the ground all the time and they're in the leaves and stuff, but the fact that you have those autumn leaves on the ground and then you have a little bit of light and yellow and green in the back. I think it's, just yes. really, it's, it's beautiful, yeah. you know, and then you see that the ground is going down, but you see that it's up in the back and yeah, yeah so you have that up and the down. I like mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Yeah. There's some layer, there's definite layers there's to layers. this image. Yeah. No doubt. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anything to add, Susan, or ready to no, move on to the was, next one? But yep. the colors first attracted me, and then um, the bird. It, and yeah, you're right. It's like they are a ground bird, and yeah, it, it's great that he laid down to take the shot and shoot yeah. through those red leaves. Otherwise, that stone gravel would have been too too prominent. Yeah, yeah, it's you're right. And the line that's you know yep. with, the, with the bird, so that's 
Yeah, you're totally right, too. And then the other thing that happens, and I think this is something so often overlooked in this getting ground level perspective thing. Um, you know, I think some people may think it's not necessary all the time or not as important, but lift this lens up a foot uh, off the ground. Different. And not only do we get yeah. the lack of background separation, but more importantly, we lose the foreground color. You know, oh, you like everything. And that, then he's just going to blend into the stones. Yeah. Uh, but, e you know, even a foot up, I think you'd still get some of that decent background separation. He might not blend in quite that much. But, you know, we lose all like from here down is all yeah. gone. Like yeah. we lose all yeah. that great foreground. And that's the thing that I think is so easily overlooked about hitting that. I mean, this is probably this looks to me like lens laying on the ground perspective. Yeah, uh, that's important to include the the lovely color that he included in the foreground there. It's, I like this. I like this. Yeah, it's a good one. All right, let's see what we got next. And you guys can fight over who wants to start on this one. <laughs> Do you know what? What? I had one of these on my did porch you? this morning. <laughs> no, you didn't. You had to pick me out on your porch. No stinking way. No, you didn't. Goodbye. Good yeah. I would have a phone call. These <laughs> And these I two are it. always <laughs> finding these two are always finding photos on social media of somebody that just has a random owl show up in their backyard oh and God. then and then they'll text we have a group chat going and they'll text and say who are these people where does this happen how is how are they this lucky <laughs> this never there. happens to me so yes <laughs> that's that's the inside joke that just happened back there i just wanted to explain <laughs> that to the to just the audience that, that's right. listening picture right now her having one of those on her porch okay just yeah. picture that. like yeah. she would she would still be home Okay. <laughs> yes, that's would right. Have, Don would have the defibrillators out. Okay? Wouldn't <laughs> you? Wouldn't you stay? You wouldn't leave her if they if you had a bird like that in your backyard, would you? No. That's right. All right. All right, you two, come on, roping you back in, roping you back in. <laughs> okay. What do you like about the photo here? Okay. First off, um, who picked this one? I did. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Why'd you pick um, it? First off, the bird stands out. It's like he's like right oh, yeah. there in your face. But what else is there? is it the it's habitat and mm -hmm. it's there softly you know it's i like this i just i liked everything about it. i like the light i like the light to the left coming out i like how the the branch is fading in you know fading out in the back i i a nice soft tree on the left mm -hmm. I, I i just loved everything about this well he's like the owl whisperer yeah you know yeah, yeah. kevin so, definitely does a nice yeah. job with those owls yeah, no doubt yes. susan um, what did you think of this photo well, I like how the that branch that Just, he's on yeah. is is going back into the frame, um, yeah. which and makes it less prominent. Like, uh, you know, if somebody it was parallel kind of thing may have yeah. done a parallel thing. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, then the the ferns and the head tail is just perfect. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, you know, it's like the the burrowing owls how they. Move yeah. 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 Little, little, yeah. Yeah. It such, gives such a, a personality to them. You, and, you sure and this wasn't on your porch? He's, he's so sure. No. Uh -huh. He's so sharp and in, in, mm -hmm. and um, contrast. contrast. Yeah. I don't want to say contrast. Yeah. I, that might have a negative connotation. It's just perfect in that he is so sharp and yeah. everything else is so soft. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Nothing else sharp in the photo except for, you know, the perch right underneath, perch, which is not yeah. well lit. So, you know, it's not just standing out at all. Uh, it's really interesting light to me in that uh, the light direction here is actually coming in camera left, you know. Yeah. Um, so you can yeah. see we got a little bit brighter side on this side, uh, but the fall off isn't too much. It's not too dark on that side. Um, uh, very much agree with what both of you said. Uh, the, the lighting works really well. The texture that's going on in this photo is great. It's not just that smooth blown out out of focus background. That's just, you know, a clean green, which can totally look nice, but I think the added texture uh, gives us a sense of just being more embedded in that forest. Uh, the curve of the perch is absolutely beautiful to me. And then, yeah, that subtle head tilt, uh, just almost gives a, a feeling of curiosity to me. Yes. Uh, when I see that bird, it just has kind of a, you know, there's, there's no fear in the bird. There's no right. uh, startle or being alert. Um, it's not looking off elsewhere, which can be nice because you can kind of see how comfortable they are when they're just glancing all over the place. But um, mm -hmm. there's eye contact. So there's, for me, a viewer, 
a really good connection with that subject. And the connection with the subject is like this bird looks kind of curious to look back at me, the viewer, which, you know, in, rea in reality, it's looking back at the photographer. Um, but, you know, it's just it's such a great expression on, in those eyes, uh, which you get more with owls and birds of that type because of those big eyes and just you know the forward facing eyes. Uh, you really get that that connection, which I think a lot of people attracts a lot of people to owls as a species um, in mm -hmm. photos, you know? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Well done. All right. Oh, ho, ho. I'm yeah. going to take this one. Oh, nice. Man. Good old cam. Um, this one. Yeah. I remember when I first saw this one, just, you know, jaw dropping, hit the floor. Yeah. He's so good. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. Look out. Oh, he is God. such a great photographer um oh. the uh the sense of scale i love when tiny birds are shown small in the frame like this it just exaggerates that sense mm -hmm. of scale that sense of how dainty they are how how precious their life is um how quickly it can go just the struggle that they have and out on this i mean just vast wide open you know flat uh which is just incredible and the backlight just absolutely perfect perfect height choice there you know those birds are right in line with the dark area to give this wonderful sense of rim light both of them with a, a foot up showing off the big yeah. you know oversized toes that they have at that stage of life uh the downy feathers glowing perfectly and then of course the beautiful pastel orange on the top you know half of the image there uh, such a well executed very very minimalist photo uh, not a lot going on here. Nothing else in focus in this image except for those birds. And it's just a, a very outstanding shot and very well composed. Oh. Off to you guys. Anything to oh. add? I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. Good. I mean, I remember the first time I met Cameron was uh, shooting with you at... Uh... Down the shore, right? Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Um he was what nine no <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> he was young yes it's like, what do they call me the prodigy you know yeah um, and he's actually shooting with a polaroid i mean come on i mean <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's incredible <laughs> yeah <laughs> um, oh my God. um no i this photo i mean i think you've said it all uh, about this photo you know it's like um here's these little birds in this great big world, you yes. know? And it's yeah. like, so you feel like, okay, they're on a little desert island. They're all by themselves. Mm -hmm. And, you know, look at it. It's like the, that rim light, that rim light yeah. is like, and then you have parfait sky, you know? Yes. You have a little blue, you have a little orange, you have some pink, you know? And the oh, rim, yeah. Parfait. It's parfait. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm sorry, are these chicks, well, what, what are these? Willet. Willet chicks. Oh, the Willet chicks. Yeah. They are. Yeah, which I've never seen. Pretty cool. Well, I couldn't remember what kind yeah. of chicks they were. So <clears throat> I picked this one because it sticks in my memory when it when it was posted. Um, I had, we were at the shore and mm -hmm. we found some chicks. I think they were turns. It was the common turns when we, yeah. Yes. Yep. And they were backlit with fire. Oh my God. I never even worked on this photo shot. And uh, I... <laughs> I worked on that photo. surprise. That is no surprise. <laughs> Patty, we're going to talk about this later. <laughs> so I edited mine. Yeah. And you know, yeah. it was a close up. It had yeah. the nice rim light. It was a, it was I, a yeah. solid shot. Ray told me it was a solid shot. It was a solid shot. And I posted it. And then, and he, then Cameron, and Cameron posted, posted at the same time this one. And yeah. I was like, I'm telling you. Oh. Gotta take his camera and beat him to death. And I went crying, I went to, to, crying to Ray. I'm like, Ray! Get <laughs> <laughs> him control. I, oh, oh, take his camera away. He's grounded. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's past your curfew. <laughs> it's just, you know, the, my photo was, it was okay. It, but it was a portrait. No, but it was. And a, then, yeah. and then yeah. the, this is a story. Yeah. Yeah. It's, story of survival. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but your yours was a story of survival. And, uh, it was like, uh, so I I want I was, <laughs> I I wonder where the mother is. Yeah, is uh, my guess would be in front of them. They're probably following, yeah. but who knows? Probably. Maybe they're. Yeah, it could be right behind them, but you know, yeah. 
Have you ever been near a uh, willet nest even before they've hatched? Those things yeah. are so territorial and defensive that you know damn well that parent was right nearby, ready to go if, if something got too close. So, yeah, no yeah. doubt about that. And I wouldn't be surprised if both parents were, you know, right out of frame. Probably, yeah. Yeah. Um, because of, that's the way they are. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, I, I totally get what you guys are saying. And, and I know you're, uh, you're saying it, uh, jokingly and with admiration, oh. but it is, oh, yes. it's he's so great, great I mean, to have, it's, it's so cool to see those photos like this, especially right after you've done one similar or of a similar species yourself, uh, because it's just such a great reminder of, Oh, there's, there's other ways to shoot things, you know? And then, like you said, that's still stuck in your mind you know, this, what, you know, eight months later now. Um, mm -hmm. so, so that's going to be yeah. in your mind the next time you're out shooting and, and have a scenario like this, um, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. where maybe you get the close shot first and then decide, you know what, these su subjects are cooperative. I'm going to back up and then try to exaggerate that size thing. And, uh, that's, that's such a great thing about photography for photographers is how these photos can be, can totally stick in your mind. And I've, you know, I can't, pull up one exactly right in my head, but I know damn well that's happened many times in, uh, when I've been out in the field and I'm shooting a scene and I think, Oh, I remember when so-and-so did this, you know, and it's not like I'm trying to, to, it's never meant to rip off and steal their photo, but it's meant right. to apply right. those same techniques right. to your scenario that you're dealing with in that moment. Um, and, uh, it's such a helpful thing to keep you growing as a photographer. Yeah. I mean, he's just, he, he, he is just, amazing photographer for his yeah. years he's yep. just amazing and so when we say that we say that only because we think he's so good oh know? no i know that yeah yeah, yeah and, definitely and i think yeah. he, he would know that too as i send him a threats in the mail yes yes he, exactly he, he listen i say it. <laughs> I say it on my podcast all the time about all these young guys and, and there is, there is totally a sense of jealousy because, yes. and it's, it's a positive jealousy, not like a oh, yeah, screw right. you jealousy. Uh, but a gel right. for me, so much of it is, um, it took me, I feel like 10 years to get to that level. Yeah. And they're like, Oh, I've been shooting for a year and a half. And I'm like, yeah. Oh my God, See, like the growth you, there yeah. is what's that? He started, yeah. he started with you. Oh, he's worked with me a bunch and I worked with him yeah. early on in his photography. Yes. Yeah. But he, he started photography. It's not like he, you know, yeah. just oh, picked yeah, up a camera and came with me, but yes, yes. Um, yeah. yes. Uh, so, that, and that's the other thing. It's great to see somebody, you know, take some of the, the more, you know, basic lessons or, you know, I definitely talked to him about backlight and we worked on that, uh, and see him just kind of apply it so expertly in the field and get something that's you know, yeah, far I mean, beyond anything. I've dirty, you know, I mean, there's, Oh no yeah. yeah, yeah. Bucks. This kid is on his belly, like a reptile. That's right. You know? yep. Yeah. You know, yep. he's like, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But just like you two, you know, uh, yeah, we've all we've all been there <laughs> yeah. and, and pushed it to the limit and, uh, you know, hurt ourselves and ache and your body's sore yeah. the next day. But uh, we do what we do for the for the shot. So yeah. and that's certainly what was happening here, I'm sure. All right. You ready for the last photo? Yes. All right. Whoever wants it can take it. Uh, go ahead. <laughs> OK. Um, hmm. hmm. Look at all that bokeh. I know. You should take it. You're the it's Boca Queen. Delicious. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It's not just the Boca, but the Boca leads you to the bird. Okay, what's in the background? You know. Yeah, it's dig in there. Thing. Yep, spend some time with that. That's important. It's it's like a cityscape. Actually. It does look like a cityscape. Yeah. Yeah, it just looks like a tree line, but uh, it does have that vibe to it, no doubt. It doesn't it? Though? It does. Yeah. That yep. is very cool. I didn't it notice cool. that at first. Yeah. And you, what you just said there, I say this over and over again on this show. I probably say it every single episode, but that's why I love doing this show. You know, that's the kind of thing that I think we all miss out on by just, you know, blasting through yeah. photos, you know, just constantly hitting that scroll, just constantly, you know, pushing with our finger on the phone on Instagram and going through and, you know, you, you see this, oh, look at the boca, look at the bird, double tap, move on, you know, um, or maybe you leave a quick, great shot you. comment. Uh, but when we sit here and spend time with this, you get yeah. to point out some of these yeah. things that you guys are starting right. to notice. Yeah, uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah. The out of focus boca in the, um, in the well, I guess all boca is probably out of focus, but <laughs> it's a... Uh, <laughs> Is more out of focus or towards the bottom there. It right. leads yeah. you into right. that. And then if you look for beyond the bird, that's, yeah, fantastic. So let me, and let me I ask like, you, hmm? go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to say, I like how the, that piece of land comes out and there's water behind it yeah. too. 
Yep. So it gives it even more depth. Yes. Mm -hmm. yeah totally yeah you can see that the water kind of wraps around it's on like a little spit of land there definitely yeah. that's a really cool yeah. thing um so a question for both of you uh what about that bokeh makes it lead you into the photo uh because to me it's pretty obvious but i'm curious to hear well, it's, it, it, it's, it's soft in the foreground and then what do you mean by soft it's soft blur i mean blurry i, I mean okay out of focus okay in the foreground and then as you're going towards the it's leading you towards the bird because it's getting it's it's in the shadows it's the it's getting lighter it's getting lighter it's getting lighter and then boom you have a silhouette in front of that's you. what you that's the important part right there that you just hit you nailed it uh patty i think for me that the the major leading part of this is the uh brightness of this bokeh you know uh real dark then we have it starting to get medium tone here and it just visually gets brighter and brighter as we go back. So uh, that just naturally leads our eye right to that brightest point. And then, yeah, boom, you got that great blue hair and just kind of silhouette right there. See, he asked me a question and I didn't freeze. You nailed it. I, you know, yes, you yeah, did. I usually go, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know it's test well, don't ask me a question. Well, you're, you're getting better at that. Um, so with that water, like, in the at the bottom of the frame yeah it almost feels like it's underwater like mm -hmm. but i know it wasn't shot i don't think it was shot i don't think so. underwater no. it doesn't appear to be but it that it gives it there's like this depth yes yep i think that person was on probably on a sand bar just like that bird same kind of thing totally and yep. it's on the same plane and it's just down a little bit and that's how it's it's giving that mm -hmm. approach you know what i'm saying it's yeah yeah that's what i just want to point out i love the I, it's a great thing to me i really like this uh but i ask you guys what you think of the photo and you both start just deconstructing it. And that's such a photographer thing to do. You're trying to figure out how it was done, what was done to cause these things. Um, it's, it's an awesome thing. Yeah, it's really neat to see that uh, because you want to figure it out and try to apply it, you know, in the field again for your Everything own techniques and stuff like that. I'm turning my head like you know? this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Pull it out. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yep, yep, exactly, yeah. Uh, so I'm just going to jump in right here and we can get, yeah. listen, keep, keep looking at it, uh, and, and feel free to add any more of that deconstruction. Cause I think that is really helpful. Um, so, so for me, color palette wise, absolutely love this photo. Uh, it's, it's monotone. It's, there's only one color in this and it's this muted golden tone. I love that it's muted as well. Uh, so often staring into the sun like this, into that bright bokeh, uh, and, and I do it all the time too. Um, that I tend to saturate, you know, uh, it, I tend to make it really push and, and really golden. Uh, but this one has a nice subtlety to it uh, because I think if that bokeh was saturated too much and got too vibrant, I think it would really pull your eye away from that silhouette because this is one of these interesting silhouettes that don't happen very often. It's a silhouette on a darker background um, mm -hmm. that the brightest part of this image is not behind the bird. It's kind of right here in the foreground in front of the bird where the sun's reflecting off the water. Yeah, uh, yeah. It is a little bit of a darker background, but because that background is so far away and there's maybe some humidity or something, there's some kind of haze in the air that's kind of causing this tree line to just fade out back there. It's also causing that the further away it goes, the lighter everything's getting through that atmosphere, that haze. And so it gives us that, that bright, or bright that dark black silhouette mm -hmm. and uh, of the bird and the bit of land that it's on and then the last little bit of touch a perfect perfect shape on this bird you can pretty much tell this is a great blue heron most people even without seeing that could probably mm -hmm. if you know your birds you might be able to nail this species which is such a great thing with a silhouette and then that foot up with the toes out yeah. right before touchdown uh is such a nice little added element to it to give uh what was mentioned earlier in, and I think the first shot we looked at a sense of motion. You can see this bird's walking, it's moving forward. It's not stationary. Uh, so there's a sense of movement in the shot. And then, yeah, it does take you a little while, but digging in and seeing that tree line kind of fading in from the back, uh, back there, uh, just absolutely love it. Gives such great depth to this photo, uh, both in the foreground and the background. It's very well done. It's cool. It's cool. Does it say and, where any, it's in coast? Salish? he's on the west coast yeah maddie, maddie works with me he's uh on the west coast as well so um oh, okay. or not as well i don't know why i said as well uh but yeah he's he's one of the people i work from uh or work with on the west coast uh so it was somewhere over there i'm not sure exactly where it was taken though uh, but yeah 
<clears throat> Anything else to add? Well, I think keeping that focus soft like that is possible because the bird and the island are so um, bold and yes. clear yeah. and yep. exact. Yep. Yeah. No, yeah, I, mean, I very much agree. I like the bold. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I yeah. don't think, I think if it was, if he tried to warm. go warm it up, yeah. I, I don't think it would be the same. Yeah you know oh yeah it very much takes on a different mood yep yeah, yeah this is this is more yeah. of a subtlety uh which i think was the right call on this one yeah and that's a cool thing with photos like this you can choose to kind of head in any direction with that you know it was really cloudy and then the sun broke through well yeah it kind of seems like this you know this obviously the sun was very strong yeah but i yeah i can just for that moment it was strong i can feel it yeah because yeah. it's so dark in the back I, you know? I can just picture myself there mm-hmm it does have a very good vibe. Yeah. Ladies, we did it. That's the show. I can't believe it's over already. It, it goes quick. Yeah. <laughs> yeah now, it really goes quick. So, um, uh, what do you guys have coming up? What's, what's the plans? I know you plan on doing some shooting in the near future. Um, you don't have to give specific details, but what are you going after? What, what are we, uh, uh we're going to go after, after we're going to crawl on the rocks tomorrow morning. Nice. And hope for some anything that's in the water. That's what we're going to hope for. At Along the coast, right? You're heading sort of like sea ducks and that's stuff it. like that. Yeah, we're going to go um, on the coast. I mean, we're only like half hour from the beach where we're going to nice. go. And nice. um, do that at sunrise and then decide Excellent. what we're going to do in the afternoon. You know, but Sounds tomorrow perfect. is the beginning of shorebirds. See what we have. There you go. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we got some winter shorebirds hanging in. Nothing. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, it's. Drink. It's possible it's to get some early arrivals coming up for the spring and summer on shorebirds, yeah. but it might be just a tad early. We'll see. And maybe some snow buntings might still be there. You know, yeah. I mean, some stragglers. I mean, maybe there might be a couple of harlequins there. I don't know. Um, the eiders might still, there's still like um, a couple of eiders there, I'm sure. You know? Yeah. Yeah, so, definitely. Yeah. Sounds good. Sounds good. So I, I think we just photograph what's there. Oh, yeah. There you go. Like, so, I'm so beyond the immediate plans, what's uh, what's exciting coming up for you? Mm -hmm. Well, let's see. Um, in the near future, like in a warblers. couple of months, warblers. Yes, there you warblers. go. That's what I was looking for. Warblers, yeah. warblers, 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 and then it's yes, like, definitely. Now, she's down here for me. Then I'm going to go to her. There so you go. I'll be shooting warblers with with Susan, and then when you come back, we'll be shooting warblers in South Jersey. Hopefully, that's right. That's the plan. And then after that, we're going, we're going to New Hampshire for Camp Run em Up. Yep, that'll be fun. <laughs> It'll be a fun summer. Best trip in the world, yes. Excellent. So yeah, we'll spend some time with those loons. So yeah. excellent. Yeah. Yeah. So what about cool. what about you, Mister Hennessy? Heading to Florida in a week, be down there for three weeks, come back, warblers nonstop for a while, then head to Alaska, come back from Alaska up to the Northeast for the loons then beyond that just some more fun stuff so nice busy season coming up i'm really looking forward yeah. to it so yeah. Oh, yeah and um yeah i can't wait to see i can't wait to work with you guys through it all see what you guys capture it's always a really good time um oh. and i gotta say thank you so much for coming on the show this was a really oh, we fun, had one. fun thank you so yeah. much for asking ray we yeah you're very welcome yeah you guys picked some really good photos there it was really nice to kind of break them down see what you thought of them and it was uh, fun. It's yeah. Just uh, fun. yeah definitely <laughs> Uh, look forward to seeing what you guys have coming up. All right. All right. Bye. All right. Excellent. Bye. Thank you everybody so much for watching. Really appreciate you guys taking the time to sit with us. Uh, make sure you follow the photographers that we shared here. Uh, the best place to follow the show, just head to wildlifephotochat.com and you can see all the episodes mixed right in there with the regular audio podcast. So check that out and subscribe to that as well. I will see you guys on the next show. Please help me out. Share this with your friends and fellow photographers. Talk to you soon.